Okay, we've been learning in this chapter about all the different regression and classification algorithms. We've been learning about how to compare them, how to evaluate them. What I want to do now is teach you how to maximize every last little bit of effectiveness you can get out of these different models. So take, for example, our two-class log logistic regression we've been working on here to predict a yes or no value of whether or not somebody will purchase a bike. So let's recall the evaluation metrics that we got out of this. In this case, our accuracy was 0.592. Okay, let's remember that. Next, let's delete this train model. Oh, actually, before I delete it, let me show you something. Come on, don't do that. No, that's fine. Anyway, take a look over here. We have all these parameters for our logistic regression. Now, in this intro class, we didn't go into the detailed formula behind each one of these different algorithms that we chose. You'll learn that in the advanced class. For now, we look at this and we have no idea what it's talking about, so we just kept the all the defaults. Well, what if there was a way that um, we could dynamically or automatically pick the very best options here to maximize performance? That's the role of. Now, let's, whoop, oh, I didn't mean to delete that one. Can I undo? Eh. Oh, there we go. View prior run. Yep. Anyway, that's the role of the tune hyperparameters pill. Hyperparameters. There it is. Let's pull this in. I'm going to, well, let me show you what it needs here. It wants an untrained model. That means our two-class logistic regression right here. It wants a training data set. Where does that come from? Right here, the left side of split data. And then it wants a optional validation data set. Uh, so I am going to, I think it's this one right here, the testing data, split data, but optional. Uh, actually, no, I'm just going to leave that one off. Anyway, outputs, we have uh, the results, and then we have the trained best model. Well, what should that go into? Uh, well, let me just start right here with this. So here we have a couple types of sweeps. We've got a random sweep. Um, let's just stick with this one for now. A number of runs, five, great. That We need to tell it what our label column or our dependent variable is. So purchase bike. Whoops. There we go. And then it says, okay, now, right now, depending on whether you're using a regression algorithm or, sorry, a, a classification or regression algorithm, which uh, metric for performance do you want to use to, to uh, try out all the different parameters? Well, accuracy is fine for a classification. That's what we're using. If it were a regression, I prefer R squared, coefficient of determination. Anyway, let's go ahead and run this one and just show you what you get from these results. So I'll run that and pause. Okay, here goes. Let's take a look here. So we have two things, the sweep results, trained best model. Let's start by showing you the sweep results. What this finds, found is the optimal number of weights here. Let's get rid of that. The opt optimal hyperparameters, they call it. Now, where does the word hyperparameters come from? Well, parameters is typically a word we use to refer to the independent variables that we choose for particular models. They didn't want to call it that. So they called it hyperparameters. These uh, options of the logistic regression algorithm that can be modified. So the optimization tolerance, L1, 2 weight, memory size, and here's resulting uh, scores for classification algorithms. So see it starts with something other than the base, it modified it, took it down, uh, that improved it. So I don't know the details on how it chooses whether to go down or up when it adjusts these things. But I noticed it went back up, it got a bit better, uh, they tried going back to zero, got a little bit better, then tried going up to, again, I'm not sure of the details on how they get this, but basically they go through and try a combination of these uh, hyperparameters until they get the best possible accuracy score. Cool. Well, what we can do with that now, let's grab another, uh, you know, I'll just copy this one. Score model. Paste from hyperparameters. We'll pull that in. Uh, let's see, that's our trained model. We'll still need, uh, let's see here. There we go. There's our, there we go, trained the best model. That goes into the side, trained model, perfect. Um, and then into this side, this is it's supposed to be a data set, not this, not the sweep results. Sorry. Uh, I need to 
make myself some room. And then our split data back into here. And let's go ahead and pull this one into the other side of evaluate model so that we can compare what we get without the hyperparameters to what we get with the hyperparameters. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, got that finished. Let's take a look. All right, very close. So this was never going to make a major difference, but in some cases it might make a bigger difference. But here, I think it will make some difference. So this is without tuning hyperparameters. Our accuracy is 0.592. That's the first one. And then we pulled our new tune hyperparameters into the right side, so it makes it this red line here. There we go, up to 0 0.600. So again, it's not making a major difference, but it gives us the ability to kind of squeeze every last drop of accuracy that we can. Let's just take a look at a different um, algorithm now and see what other options it gives us. So I'm going to delete this one. Let's try classification. Um, all right, boosted or two class decision for us. Let's give this one a shot. So this one has, and we'll put it into both of these here, number of trees that can be modified, um, maximum depth. Cool. We don't know what any of these things mean, or at least I'm assuming you guys don't know what any of these, these things mean, but the great thing about this pill, tune model hyperparameters, it doesn't matter. We don't need to know. All we're going to do now is run. Let's pause that. All right, let's see what we got here. So uh, first of all, let's take a look at our sweep results. Visualize. All right, so here's the different options for the decision trees or decision forest algorithm. Here are the accuracy scores. Looks like this one made quite a difference, actually. Playing with a number of uh, samples per leaf node, random splits. Yeah, from 0.55 to 0.686, that's a really good improvement uh, and worth doing with tuning hyperparameters. Cool. So let's take a look now at uh, the difference, the final difference with and without any of the tuning parameters. Visualize the results. Yeah, you can definitely see here's our blue line without tuning hyperparameters and the red line clearly above it quite a bit. Let's take a look here. 0 0.662. 0.686. Yeah, definitely worth doing in that case. So there are a lot of contexts that tuning model hyperparameters can be used within. Um, so this is just one example, but it can be used to uh, just in a variety of places throughout Azure ML Studio to fine tune some of these options that we typically just accept the defaults on.